In this video, we're computing the arc length of a semicircle of radius 1 by using the classic arc length formula from calculus. So before we get started, we need to actually have an equation for this curve. We need to think of it as a function of x. So recall that the equation of a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, if we solve that for y, we get equations for the upper and lower half of the circle. So I just subtract x squared from both sides and take the square root of the result. And the upper half will correspond to the positive y values there. And that means the equation of our curve is y equals square root 1 minus x squared. So now that we have a formula for that function, we can apply our arc length formula. But I'm actually going to take just a few seconds to rederive that arc length formula from scratch because it's so fast. So the reasoning starts like this. We look at a tiny little section of arc that we call ds, provided that that's very small. It's very close to being a straight line segment. Then we decompose that into its x and y parts. So we have an infinitesimal horizontal piece, that's dx, together with an infinitesimal vertical piece, and that's dy. Now we simply apply the Pythagorean theorem to relate dx and dy to our arc length increment ds. So there it is, ds is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So it's the square root of the sum of the squares of the lengths of those two legs. And now we're going to factor a dx out of the inside of that square root. So pulling a dx out of that square root is the same as dividing each of those pieces by dx squared inside the square root. And when we do that, we end up with a dy squared divided by dx squared, which could then be written as dy over dx all squared. Well, then we recognize that as the derivative of y with respect to x. And there's our arc length formula. To get a small arc length increment, I take the square root of 1 plus the derivative of our function, then multiplied by dx. And then we'll just add up all the arc length increments by using integration. So to start doing the work here, we need to compute the derivative of y. Remember, y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's 1 minus x squared to the 1 half power. So applying the power rule to that, I take the derivative with respect to the interior function, and I get 1 half times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. And be very careful here to apply the chain rule. I still have to tack on the derivative of the interior here, which is a negative 2x. Now the 2s are going to cancel. And rewriting this thing as a fraction, I have negative x in the numerator, and I have a square root of 1 minus x squared in the denominator. So when we square that thing, the minus sign in the numerator goes away, and I just have x squared over 1 minus x squared. So all this means that our ds arc length increment is given by the square root of 1 plus x squared over 1 minus x squared dx. Now we can clean that up by getting a common denominator. So this 1 over here, I'm going to multiply that guy by 1 minus x squared divided by 1 minus x squared. And then I can just add these two fractions together. So when I add the numerators, I'm going to get 1 minus x squared plus x squared, all divided by 1 minus x squared. And of course, these x squareds in the numerator are going to cancel out. And things are starting to get quite a bit simpler here. Now my ds has reduced to the square root of 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. So let's go ahead and apply the integral here to find the total arc length. The total arc length s is going to be the sum of all the ds's. This is what integration does. It's a summation device for adding up infinitely many infinitesimal contributions. And so I could integrate from negative 1 to 1 here. But exploiting the symmetry of the problem, I can just say, let's integrate the right half of the semicircle. That's on 0 to 1, and then double the result. And I'm going to write my ds in here as 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's multiplied by dx. Now at this point, we have to recognize a common formula for an integral that gives us the inverse sine function. And I'll post a link up at the top real quick to the derivation of this formula, if you've never seen that before. This thing in our integral is precisely the derivative of the inverse sine. So I end up with 2 inverse sine of x evaluated from 0 to 1. So when I plug in the 0 there, I get the inverse sine of 0. In other words, the angle whose sine is 0. And that's 0. So I don't have to worry about the lower limit. All I have to worry about is the upper limit, and I need to figure out the angle whose sine is 1. Well, that's just pi over 2. So I end up with 2 times pi over 2, and that reduces to pi. And we've got the arc length of the semicircle. Now, we should check this against what we already know about geometry. We know the circumference of an entire circle is 2 pi r. Well, this time we're dealing with a circle that has a radius of 1, 
and we're dealing with only one half of the circle, so that agrees. It gives us the same pi that we got by using calculus. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.